Greetings everyone, I'm Kyle from the ShoddyCast channel, and today I will be introducing you to everything The Elder Scrolls Online has to offer for PvP enthusiasts. Now, ESO has an immense amount of PvE content, and if you want to see our review on that, we do have a beta review specifically for that, uh, but when you're done restoring a village of stone people back to flesh, or deciding whether or not to bend an army of undead to your will, there is an entire province beckoning you to claim it for your alliance. So what does this game bring to the PvP side of gaming? ESO's gaming engine and servers were designed with latency in mind, and the developers have focused intently on being able to display hundreds of players on the screen at once. Now this may seem like a hype statement, but I can testify that this is actually quite accurate. Uh, now when it comes down to it, it'll be your computer that really starts to lag as it may not be able to handle all the effects that are happening on the screen at once. Now luckily ESO has a huge amount of scalability, most of which only require a short reload of the UI to apply those changes. Uh, my only hopes in this area is that ZeniMax Online Studios will implement a way to automatically adjust my visual settings as I enter and leave Cyrodiil. Because while displaying nameplates and health bars and lowering the graphical settings uh, are helpful in PvP, when I return to PvE, I would like to buff up my visuals again and remove those immersion-breaking nameplates. Alright, so you've reached level 10 and you want to help fight for your alliance. Well, the first thing you'll want to do is bring up your alliance war window. Here will be displayed all sorts of information for your alliance, including its standing compared to the other alliances. Should you be the competitive type, clicking on the leaderboard tab will give you the scores of the top players overall, as well as the top players within your alliance. So when you're done gloating over your scores, or in my case crying, uh, you can click on the final tab which will list all of the available campaigns. Now if you're unaware, there are many versions of Cyrodiil. Think of each campaign as its own PvP server. You'll not only see your home server and guest servers, you'll also see all the servers that your friends are on. Assuming you're in the same alliance as your friends, you'll be able to party up with them and then join their campaign and fight alongside them. If you find that you enjoy your friend's campaign more than your own, you will have the option to change your home server to their server, or their campaign I should say, um, at the cost of uh, alliance points. Since sieging keeps and resources seems to be the end-all be-all of PvP within ESO, let's go over some of the features it has to offer. First off, we have the map of this massive province of Cyrodiil, which comes directly from the Elder Scrolls Oblivion game. They actually use the height map from that game, they just scale down some of the higher mountains and stuff, uh, down to, you know, a lower area for players to more easily travel over. Uh, you see all the yellow there on the map? Yeah, you might want to get used to that because the Old Mary Dominion will conquer all. No, but seriously, uh, as you see there, there, there's an assortment of resources to claim for your alliance and your guild. Uh, keeps are those castle icons you see there, and also you may see the three icons that are around each of these keeps, and they represent the three types of resources. Uh, these resources are the lumber mills, the mines, and the farms. The farms and the mines, these will strengthen up your keep, while the farm strength, uh, strengthens the alliance NPCs that help guard your keep. Should you take a keep or a resource for your alliance, you may be able to claim that uh, keep or resource for your guild as well. Uh, doing this will allow you to display your guild's guild store, uh, and this will allow anyone that comes to that resource to then talk to that quartermaster and peruse the goods you have in your guild store. Taking a look at the center of the map, you'll see six keeps circling the Imperial City. Currently, should an alliance claim and hold all those six keeps, that alliance will then be able to crown a new emperor. Oh, uh, So, <laughs> now not only can you bask in the glory of your new ruler, but you'll also have access to alliance-wide buffs that will make defending those keeps just a little bit easier. Uh, as you're killing enemies and claiming keeps for your alliance, you'll notice that you're gaining alliance points. Uh, these act as a form of currency, uh, but they also determine your rank within your alliance and your standing in the leaderboards. Should you have the most points when the final center keep is claimed, you will actually be the one that is crowned emperor. Uh, as emperor, you will be gifted with the emperor's armor and a unique skill line. 
So not only will you have these new and powerful abilities, but you'll also look badass with your unique costume that only emperors can wear. So now we know why you'd want to claim keeps and resources, but how exactly do you go about doing it? Uh, first off, visiting a quartermaster, you will open up a store for you to buy siege equipment, soul gems, repair kits, uh, and other assorted goodies which can be purchased with alliance points or gold. At the launch of the game, we will see trebuchets, catapults, ballistae, battering rams, and flaming oil. Each of these have their own purpose, uh, so you'll want to choose wisely. If you know you're going to take down a keep wall, or at least attempt to do so, you'll want to throw on a trebuchet to one of your quick slots and get to work. So once you've found a flat surface that's far enough away from other siege equipment, you'll be able to place that siege engine, uh, which you will then be able to aim and launch yourself. But you want to be careful, as you know, enemies aren't just going to be sitting idly by while you're storming their keeps. They'll have their own siege equipment, and while you're concentrating on their walls, they'll actually be concentrating on you. Congratulations! You've broken through the outer walls, and now the fun really begins. Uh, as others are clearing out the rest of the vermin in the courtyard, you help break down the inner keep's doors with a handy dandy battering ram. Uh, you'll want to defend this at all costs, but be sure to look above as enemy players may be pouring flaming oil down upon you from above. Assuming you've made it this far, your enemy will give it all they have to keep you from capturing the two flags within the inner keep and thus claiming the keep for your alliance. Once the keep is yours, it's best to start repairing the keep's walls and gates in preparation for a counterattack. Remember that there are three alliances in this war, and the third may be lurking behind a wall waiting for you to do the dirty work for them. Believe it or not, Cyrodiil isn't just about epic scale battles or the capturing of keeps. No, there's plenty more to do for those that just wish to have that PvP server feel of questing in a hostile zone. Head to a town within Cyrodiil and you will find many repeatable quests that challenge you to roam the dangerous lands as you fulfill the needs of people stuck in the middle of this alliance war. Uh, completing these will net you both gold alliance points and you may even get experience as well. Do you wish to help your alliance but you don't want to do epic scale battles or siege keeps? Then help in your own way by taking on bounty and scouting missions. Your alliance always needs to know what the enemy is doing and you can help by scouting out specific locations and reporting back your findings. If you want that more active role, help your alliance by turning in bounties that target specific targets out in the field. Those players that hide in the shadows around towns and waypoints to gink unsuspecting enemy players will particularly like these missions. Taking keeps and bettering our alliance is all well and good, but in the end we're all in this fight for ourselves. If you're the kind of person that loves the best gear you can get, PvP is a pretty smart bet. Turn in those hard-earned alliance points for some epic gear, literally. You'll find NPCs that will sell you all the weapons and armor you could want. Don't worry about losing rank or position on the leaderboards either because spending your points will not affect that. Just don't forget to save some points for a sweet ride. I'm sorry to say that when ESO launches we won't be able to enter the Imperial City. I also wouldn't recommend that you swim there as you may find yourself being eaten alive by a school of slaughterfish. That said, Zoss has stated that they have plans for this city which will introduce a new area to explore and possibly fight over, as well as new PvP mechanics and also new siege equipment to tinker with. If there's one wish I had for this area, it's that they'd add arena-style combat. I know some complain and state that it would distract from the AVA going on, that's Alliance vs Alliance, uh, but listen, the arena was a staple for the Oblivion game and thus would be a huge mark in Zoss's favor should they choose to include it. Plus, not everyone likes huge scale battles, and instead they prefer a more intimate encounter. No, I don't mean it like that, you pervs. I mean 1v1, 2v2, 4v4, so on, would grant people a more accurate judgment of their builds and gear loadouts, as well as lead to the possibility of tournaments in the future. Plus, throw in a spectator mode for people to join in, make bets, and jeer at their rival fighters. All in all, the PvP side of ESO will be its saving grace, should the PvE aspect not fare well to the MMO purists and Elder Scrolls fanboys. I can absolutely guarantee that this game will not satisfy everyone, and I'm sure Zoss knew this going in from the get-go. But luckily they have been led by a person who has exceptional experience 
with PvP and especially three-faction-based warfare. Unlike other MMOs, this game offers so many variations of PvP in the same province, like siege warfare, epic scale battles of hundreds of players at once, Elder Scrolls being used as a form of capture the flag, and that feel of a PvP server as you're questing in hostile territory. All of this and the promise of more PvP content in the future means there will be something for everyone to enjoy. I know a lot of people don't like PvP. Many feel that it's just full of elitist jerks that care more about their ranking than actually accomplishing anything for their alliance, and in many cases they'd be correct, but I think this game will offer those that were a little leery about PvP a reason to dip their toes in the water and find that it's warmer than they thought. It's not for everyone, but Zoss has definitely seemed to make it appeal to as many players as they possibly could. If this formula will work for their game cannot be determined yet, uh, but I can tell you as a person who has had a lot of personal experience with AVA, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I've been Kyle from the Shoddy Cast, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Try again later.